Hope you all are doing well out there, good people. And I hope you are ready for some more big Persona updates because so much is going on with the Persona series right now that Teddy simply can't contain himself. <laughs> We've got more to talk about regarding the Persona 3 Reload DLC, along with information pertaining to a Switch version. And with Persona 6, we've got tons more insider information to cover. Plus, a now redacted posting that suggests the release date to one of Atlas's biggest games releasing this year. Yeah, we've got a lot to cover here in this update, so keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs within the hype train. Participate in my Digital Deluxe Edition giveaway of the upcoming Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance, and let's roll. Persona 3 Reload has been quite the hit for both Persona fans and Atlas this year, but there has been some insane controversy surrounding the game's DLC rollout that just kicked off last week, and fans are not happy. Not only did fans last week get confirmation from Atlas firsthand that Persona 3 Portable's female protagonist will never come to Persona 3 Reload, but now we can confirm that the anticipated remake of Persona 3 FES's The Answer DLC can only be bought by buying into the $34.99 US Expansion Pass. That's right, Persona 3 Reload's roughly 30-hour epilogue chapter is going to cost you half the price of the base game, and there is no real way around it, other than one, that is. Only owners of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate are going to be able to receive all the contents of the Persona 3 Reload Expansion Pass, complementarily with their subscription. But for owners of every other version of the game, we are going to have to fork up the price of the Expansion Pass to get just one part of the content that most Persona fans are interested in. In an interview with Push Square, a PR representative from Atlas lays it all out, plain and simple, with, the three parts of the expansion pass will not be available separately, and only available as part of the full pass. To give you all brief context to this expansion pass, the first two parts are costume and BGM sets, in which the first part was released last week, with the second part releasing in May. The only part of this expansion pass that offers sizable content is Episode Igis, releasing sometime in September. Persona fans are not happy with this paywall, as evidenced by the negative reviews the expansion pass is getting on Steam, with just over 20% of users claiming it to be positive. But let me know what you all think about this controversy in the comments. As for me, I'm happy to spend money on DLC when I can buy it individually, even though many of us were hoping Episode Igis was included with the game when it launched last month. Even so, we've got a lot of new features coming to this epilogue that will likely elevate it far over the mediocre mode we got in Persona 3 Fest, yet it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth when you are forced to pay for an expansion pass that costs half the price of the game. Not sure everyone will be interested in listening to the Juness theme while roaming the 200 plus floors of Tartarus included in the pass, but hey, sign me up for what it's worth. If Persona 3 Reload's expansion pass is leaving you with a sour taste in your mouth, or maybe it's just the tantalizing soundscape of the Juness theme, nah, that track slaps. Then trade all that in for the sourness and savagely sweet, savory goodness of Gamersups and their legendary products. It is because of their commitment to quality across their extensive range of products and eclectic assortment of thirst-clenching energy supplements that fuels me to deliver this content to all you good people that I am honored to announce that Gamersups and myself at Fun My Life have teamed up for my first long-term partnership to spread the kind of energy that will keep you all satiated throughout your gaming endeavors and beyond. This channel creates content for people with great taste in games, whether it be Persona, Final Fantasy, Resident Evil, God of War, and beyond. And due to your great taste in games, it's not a stretch to say you've got great taste in drinks and quality products as well. No, Gamersups is no mystery food axe. It's the kind of energy that will max out all your stat parameters, with all the benefits unlocked with its sleek industry-leading formula. Now, why would I want to ditch my other go-to energy drinks over Gamersups, you might ask? Here's why. Gamersups has got your vitamin game covered, covering five of the most essential vitamins you would want in any supplement, with vitamins C, D3, B6, B12, and B7 all packed in the dozens of flavors on offer. 
Plus, these flavors, like the personally recommended Grandpa's Ashes, Dragon Fruit Punch, and Emotional Damage, like the rest of their offering, all include servings of less than one calorie and with absolutely no sugar. That's right, no insulin spiking in any of GamerSup's products. And best of all, all these products have caffeine-free options as well. In addition, it's keto-friendly, loaded with nootropics to help sharpen your focus, and each tub includes 100 servings, saving you heaping piles of cash for the right kind of energy that keeps on giving. You have the best of both worlds here, providing a great taste and energy with no crash, all while saving you money in the process. And speaking of saving money, go ahead and try out GamerSups by getting free samples straight from the GamerSups website. And when you're ready to commit to any of the dozens of fantastic and varied tubs, snacks, and other products on offer, use the code FUNMYLIFE to get 10% off your order. It's a great way to show your appreciation to all the hard work that goes into creating these videos for all you good people, while also being able to save more on the kind of energy that will fuel you throughout your day, even up to and well past the launch of Persona 6. A big thank you to GamerSups and to all you awesome viewers that help make this channel what it is. The Persona 6 insider information has been dominating the Persona headlines for the last several weeks, and just days ago, we got even more insight into the next mainline game. Starting off, we've got several sources of insider information to disclose with you all today, including Midori over on Twitter, a Persona insider with a perfect track record accurately announcing Persona 3 Reload and Persona 5 Tactica months before their official reveals, Head on the Block over on Reset Era, whose information mirrors Midori's statements, and industry insider Nate the Hate on Direct Xbox. Just take the following with grains of salt, as Atlas has not confirmed any aspect of Persona 6 just yet, other than confirming it was in development back in 2021. Our first bit of Persona 6 information comes from Reset Era from user Head on the Block, where he makes the claim that Persona 6's color scheme is green this time around, with the game's theme being black and white. He continues by adding that the player can do things during both the daytime or nighttime, which doesn't really add a whole lot here since you've been able to do that in all the last several Persona games. However, I'm thinking that he's referring to there being more player choice as to when we can get certain things done. Potentially more player freedom with our time management, perhaps. He states, just as he did last year during the earlier information on Persona 6, that there will be two characters whose names start with K and S, potentially referring to one of these protagonists as a foreign exchange student, along with DLC that lets you fly. Super vague, but regarding the DLC, both Midori and Head on the Block suggest recently that Atlas is committed to greatly expand on Persona 6 with DLC for a number of years after after the game's launch. We discussed that in detail in the previous video going over last week's Persona 6 updates, of which you can view in the link provided in the description. Head on the Block, in a different post, says that players can play as a woman, along with there being tons of DLC that allows players to customize the character's appearance. While the user claims that players can play as a woman, he writes in another post that the main character is not a woman, with another post saying that you can play as a woman outside of combat and dungeons. So perhaps players can take control of more than just two main protagonists in Persona 6. I know, that's a lot, but the thing with Head on the Block in particular is that while his information is much more substantial than Midori's information in regards to the game's content, his vague posts, along with him being really the only insider going deeper into the game's content and themes, makes Head on the Block's claims harder to corroborate. In more news regarding Persona 6, and yes, there's a bit more to go over, let's head on over to Nate the Hate over on Direct Xbox for revealing information about the game's launch platforms, and whether or not the once exclusive series to the PlayStation systems will remain that way when Persona 6 launches. From the information I've heard, it does seem as though Persona 6 will be coming to the Xbox, so fans have something to look forward to, says Nate the Hate. I'm not 100% sure if it's like day and date with the PlayStation version, but considering the way the Persona games have been day to date with the multi-platform releases at this point, it may be a safe assumption to make that Persona 6 will be day and date on Xbox and PlayStation. It would be a really big deal if Microsoft was able to secure that on Game Pass, but I'd imagine that would take a lot to do. 
While Nate the Hate says here that he's heard that the game will indeed come to Xbox, Midori confirms the authenticity of his statement on Twitter, adding that it is correct information, with the game arriving on multiple platforms as well. On top of that, Midori, in response to a user asking if the Switch 2 platform will be supported, states that it will. For those wondering about a PC release, well, if the game's on virtually every other platform, I would say absolutely freaking lootly it will come to PC, seeing as the recent Persona games have been launching day and date on Steam. As for when we are likely to anticipate the launch of this game, Head on the Block suggests that the game is locked for 2025 and that Atlas moved around other games to prepare for its launch. While this could certainly be true, I'm honestly more in agreement with what Midori stated last year, with Midori suggesting that while the game was planned for a 2025 launch, that 2026 is more likely. 2026 also happens to be the Persona series' 30th anniversary, but either way, I would say it's rather likely that we will get some sort of official announcement and trailer from Atlas announcing Persona 6 later this year, or definitely in 2025. All right, that was a ton of information right there. So I figured it would be best to just sum it all up right here, detailing everything new that we've learned from this new Persona 6 insider information. The game will apparently star two protagonists, with the game's color scheme being the color green. The game's theme, however, will be black and white, perhaps reflecting the dual protagonists. Both day and night seem to be especially important here in Persona 6, further highlighting the contrasting black and white theme. The protagonist's names start with a K and an S, and while one of the protagonists is said not to be female, players will be able to control a female character outside of combat and dungeons. There will be a multi-year approach to DLC, with content coming in the form of both cosmetic updates and massive story content updates, including allowing players to fly, introducing additional characters, and expanding the game world. It has been stated that the game will also feature a semi-open world format, and that the game is 95% complete. The setting for Persona 6 will also stick to the high school setting. The game is slated to grace both PlayStation and Xbox consoles, along with a PC and Switch 2 release, of which the Switch 2 is slated to release next year in 2025. In case I missed anything, let me know in the comments below, and just wanted to point out that Sega, the publisher of the Persona series in Japan, has very lofty expectations for Persona 6, stating that they hope to see Persona 6 achieve sales of up to 5 million units sold in its launch year, by releasing the game on multiple platforms and worldwide on day one, which further corroborates Midori's and Head on the Block statements about the game being multi-platform. And with all that said, my friends, I want you to let me know your thoughts thoughts on all this information on Persona 6 in the comments. If any of this turns out to be true, because at the end of the day, this is just insider information for now, Persona 6 sounds absolutely epic and on a scale much larger than any Persona game we've come to see before it. And while I'm a little skeptical that some of the essence of Persona may be lost in translation due to its epic nature, I am confident that Atlas are going to knock this game out of the park, and I can't wait to hear more about it. Speaking of a game that I also can't wait to play, later this year, we have Metaphor Refantasio, somewhat of a spiritual successor to the Persona series made by an all-star cast of Persona developers. And while we know the game will release sometime this fall, we have what could be an official release date for this highly anticipated game. What has since been redacted, Microsoft's storefront page of the game in Hong Kong stated that the game would be releasing on October 12, 2024, but Midori believes that it's possible that the release date for Metaphor Refantasio is October 11, 2024, stating that sometimes the listings can have a mistake where the release is wrong by one day. Either way, an October release for Metaphor would be awesome, with perhaps a Persona 6 announcement coming from the Game Awards show in December in order to give Metaphor its time to soak up the spotlight. In this same thread from Midori, she claims that the game will not launch on the Switch, but instead will be coming to the Switch 2 when that launches next year in 2025. She also claims that Persona 3 Reload will also be getting a Switch 2 release as well. 
There is so much going on with Persona in a year completely stacked with Persona 3 Reload and its DLC releasing, Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance coming out in a few months, and an entirely new game in Metaphor Refantasio arriving this fall. With Persona 6 insider information erupting from the internet seemingly every day now, I'd say we're getting very close to an Atlas reveal later this year for the next mainline Persona game, and I invite you all to stay tuned to the channel for all the coverage and updates. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to never miss more Persona content, like the video if you've enjoyed it, and watch this video for a deeper dive into the previous Persona 6 information we got last week. And I look forward to seeing all you good people real soon in the next one.